I'm in Bensdale in Gippsland with Alastair McAuliffe, who's the operations manager for a Gippsland Agricultural Group, and they're running performance trials of different pasture species, and this creates the need for a really good fence. <laughs> Alastair, how are you, mate? Good, thanks, Tim. Yourself? Not too bad, mate. Tell me a little bit about what's going on behind us here. Yeah, so we've got a lot of trials going on a farm at the minute. This one particularly is a grass trial, so different varieties. Uh, our agronomist comes in and plants them in a special pattern, and then when they grow, we take yield data. Um, and this was just harvested just last night. We then take them up into the shed to dry them, so we get dry matter yields um, on the different varieties, and we can compare variety for variety in a like situation. Alistair, it's exciting what Gippsland Agricultural Group are getting up to. We're not just going past loosened trials like we have behind us, pasture trials like we were standing in before, but you've also got a really interesting trial over here called Growing Topsoil, haven't you? Yep, we'll go and have a look right now. Sounds good. I hear this trial has kicked some amazing goals in just 12 months, mate. Yeah, it's generated a lot of interest and have learnt a lot in the last 12 months. And you've built topsoil. We have grown topsoil if that's possible. Tell me about the history of this trial. What's happened in this paddock, mate? Yeah, so we've got a, a membership base that um, traditionally to grow more land, we go outwards. But we starting to find that it's too expensive to go out. Yep. So we thought, can we go down and grow that topsoil so we can hold more water, hold more nutrients and grow more of this stuff uh, long term. And so what have you been doing to do that? Yeah, so what we started is um, we got a group. There's four different trials going on here and each group came up with a different idea of what's going to work well. Some put a lot of traditional um, fertiliser on, some did a lot of organic type stuff, and what we found is that they all wanted to do a multi-species over the top of that and turn that back in. So we have cultivated, we deep ripped, brought up a little bit of clay to mix in with the topsoil, planted that multi-species crop over it. It grew so well that we decided not to turn it all in, but to crash graze it with cattle first, and then turn it in for a green manure crop. And so we did that last year, and then now we've planted a barley crop on top of that this year coming around. So there were some striking results when you dug the pits this year and had a look at how the different trial soils had behaved, weren't there? Yeah, so we got the excavator in and dug uh, the four different pits um, in the different trials. So we had Pete Norwoods from Full Cycle Nutrition. Mm -hmm. We had a farm advisory group. And then we also had Fed Uni. They all had their different amendments. And when we're starting to dig, we noticed a significant ease in digging in the in the treatments of those three compared to the control. Out of all of them, I think the full cycle nutrition uh, pit was easiest to dig, and it had actually grown the most topsoil over the years that we had um, done the amendments. And that, interestingly enough, that plot had the least amount of amendments, didn't it? Well, it had the least amount of traditional or synthetic amendments. Uh, it did have a cocktail of different amendments, but they were, they were amendments that I guess I wouldn't have ne necessarily thought of at the start. Maybe a bit of voodoo juice coming in there? Yeah, we had to dance and put on a certain time of the night. Oh, no, I'm we, sure you didn't. No, we didn't have to do that, but there were some things that were unusual, but the proof is in the pudding, and when we see um, the results from the holes or the cores that we t took, we can't deny that whatever Pete uh, had uh, put it in his amendments has definitely helped with the microorganisms breaking down that tight soil and loosening up and allowing those roots to get down deeper. As farmers we've got to understand haven't we that it's not just multi-species on top but we've got to be growing multi-species in the ground as well and that includes the microbes, the fungi and all of those things. I think it's one of the most un, uh, misunderstood or uh, we don't have enough information yet about the soil, the science in soil. There's that many living organisms under the soil, and if we start to look at more helping them, looking after them, we're going to see great results above the soil as well. Well, it's great to see Gippsland Growers Group actually setting out and doing your own scientific trials and putting these things to the test and checking them out for yourselves, and it's a grower-funded group. It's a grower funder group and the reason that we can do things like this is because of the interest from our local farming community. Those guys come up with these concepts, they help us run it and without them we wouldn't be able to uh, do this either. Mate, this doesn't happen if it's not protected and you've got a bit of an issue with roos around here so you've had to put up a special fence to protect these trials? Yep, so right now we're constructing a stock exclusion fence um, and we're trying to keep out some of those unwanted critters that feel free to walk through any old fence that we have. So we think that we're going to be able to keep them out. We've electrified it, 
and um, the proof will be in the pudding if they keep coming in here and wrecking some of this crop that we've worked so hard to grow. Um, it's money down the drain for us or for the grower group, but if we can spend a bit of time fencing, um, we'll be able to keep them out and everything will be better for it. And you, once again, you don't just put in one fence, you're trialling different types of fences, so let's go and have a look at your fencing trial. We'll go and have a look right now. Alistair, this is a pretty fancy looking fence, mate, but it's actually quite cost effective, isn't it? Because it cuts down on steel. Yes, it cuts down on steel. Quite quick to construct. This has been done in the morning and um, we're looking forward to seeing how it actually works. So you're not just putting one type of fence in here either. You do grower demonstrations of different options that are available. Talk me through the different options of this eye post exclusion fence. Yep, so this is the biggest one that uh, the Gallagher guys do with their eye post. It's 1650 high. They claim it keeps out um, kangaroos and deer. Okay. Then we go down to a 1300 high one. Yep, this which is this one here. This one here, yep. And it should keep out wild dogs and things like that. Then we go down to your more regular height fence further down, 11, 1100 high, and that'll keep out all your ground dwelling stuff like wombats and, and wallabies and things like that. And the good news is you're also demonstrating um, a fix for existing fences. People don't have to throw away an existing fence, they can actually retrofit a, a leaning offset that will also keep dogs, pigs and wombats out of a property. Yeah, so we've got a little stretch of fence down the very end there. It's just a rimlock fence. If they know it's not electrified, they'll walk around there, but they're going to put an apron on there and that should keep out all the, the wombats that are trying to come in and eat our grass as well. Fantastic. So it's really good if growers in the Gippsland area want to come and have a look at one of these fences for themselves, get an idea of costing off you, have a look at what's available in the different configurations and even how to set one up. It's easy, but you've got to know Yep. they can come down to uh, Gippsland Agricultural Group and have a look for themselves. Yep, anytime they're welcome to come down, they can have a touch, they can have a play, and um, people like to see it in the flesh, and they can come down here and do that. Thank you very much for your time today, mate. It's Thanks exciting there. to see growers looking after growers and doing really valuable science. Appreciate you coming down and have a look. Guys, get on to Gippsland Agricultural Group. They're an innovative and motivated bunch of people that are doing really exciting things. Even really cool fences.